Well, you done did it now. You bought a used turbo off eBay. Is this the worst decision you could have made? Or did you get lucky and find yourself a deal? Well, let's find out. Now when I say eBay turbo, most people automatically think of the super cheap $100 to $200 new turbo kits that are obviously cheap Chinese knockoffs. If you go that route, you're on your own. And you're probably going to get something that's not going to last very long without major issues. If you search eBay for used turbo and put in a manufacturer and possibly model, you may get lucky and find a takeoff part that someone is trying to get rid of. I knew what brand and model I was looking for and found someone selling that exact turbo. Here's where you do your first simple inspections for obvious signs of an issue. If the seller doesn't include clear pictures and a lot of them, there's usually something they're trying to hide. Look for the overall condition of the turbo, cracks, rust, damage, that type of thing. The main areas to focus on are the compressor wheel and housing and the turbine wheel and housing. I'm looking for chips on the compressor wheel in these areas, or damage to the intersection of the housing. You know, scratching or signs that there is major radial play in the shaft. I'm going to do the same thing for the turbine wheel. Now if you do see signs of damage in these areas, it still may be a good enough deal to take a chance on, but you might be in for unforeseen costs with the rebuild that make your purchase not as great of a savings as advertised. The seller listed this particular turbo as for parts, needs rebuild, so this was a gamble, but since the unit looked pretty solid, I decided to take a chance on it. And here it is. Let's get to the inspection. I'll get the tape off here. This threaded port looks pretty good. I may run a chaser in it if needed, but it looks all right to me. Compressor discharge and turbine intake look fine. At this point, I'll check the shaft play. Now a little bit of radial or side to side movement is normal, but only a little bit. Lateral play or in and out movement is no good and an obvious sign that you need to rebuild it. This one actually feels pretty good. I'm still rebuilding the unit anyway, but this is something you want to see. Not a lot of shaft play in it at all, and it spins freely. Okay, let's get the oil drain tube off here. The gasket is pretty stuck, but I'll clean that all up when the cartridge is bare. Same deal with the oil feed fitting. At this point, I'm going to mark the location of the compressor and turbine housing with the center cartridge. Oh, that's nice. This turbo supposedly came off the same engine that I will be putting it on, so I want it to fit up. Marking these parts will help you reassemble it back to its original shape. Okay, let's start disassembly. A lot of turbos will use a large snap ring or clamps to keep the housings on. This one uses clamps, so I've got to get those loose first. I'm going to start with the turbine housing. It's a tight fit in some areas, so I'm going to need to knock it loose in order to get the bolts all the way out. Use caution, the exhaust components are usually stuck together pretty well. I'm using some penetrant spray and a brass punch to try to loosen everything up. She's moving little by little. Use caution here to drive the housing out straight. You don't want to damage your turbine wheel. Okay, it's free. Let's inspect the inner diameter for any signs that the turbine wheel has made contact with the housing. This thing looks great. Nothing to worry about here. Now we'll get the compressor housing loose by again taking off all the clamps. It should not be stuck on as this is the intake side and you shouldn't have a lot of exhaust soot here. Same deal with this housing. Inspect the inner diameter for any signs the compressor wheel has made contact. This one again is very clean. Things are looking pretty good so far. If you did find scratches in these areas, you'd have to be the judge on the severity of them. A turbo will generally work just fine with minor signs of contact, but anything major in the wheel and housing will probably need to be replaced. So let's work on getting the turbine shaft out. I'll mark the two wheels so I can try to line them up on reassembly for balance purposes. You'll put a socket on the turbine wheel and another on the nut securing the compressor wheel. Keep in mind these are usually left hand thread which means you turn this fastener to the right to loosen it. Once the nut is loose you can remove the compressor wheel. The turbine is held in with a little clip so it will need some persuasion to get it free. Don't go crazy here you're just trying to knock it loose. Remove the turbine shaft and cover plate and set them aside for now. It's time to disassemble the cartridge. These are all a little different, but pretty similar in design regardless of your turbo model. Just take it slow and lay out everything you remove in order so you can put it back together easier. There's a small clip holding the oil bearing in place, so I'll start by removing that. Then I'll use a pick to fish out the bearing. Next flip the cartridge over and work on the compressor side. To get this main cover assembly off, you'll need to remove a larger C-clip, then simply pry the cover off. This is usually a two-piece cover held together with a spring clip, so be careful when you separate the parts, and again, keep them in order. Next, reach into the cartridge and remove the oil deflector and the thrust bearing. 
This was a two-piece design also, so pay attention, once again, to how they all fit together. So to get this oil bearing out, there's another C-clip you'll need to remove as well, and then reach down and fish it out again. There should be two bearings like this on most turbos. Once you have these pieces out, you're in clean and inspect mode. There's a lot of carbon buildup on the turbine section, so I'm going to let the turbo sit in some vinegar overnight to help break that up. This is also a good option if you have a lot of rust to remove. Once it is soaked long enough, you can work the carbon and try to brush as much of it off as you can. I'll also get the gasket material off the oil feed and drain fittings at this stage. Clean off the cartridge really well and inspect it along the way. Just make sure there's no signs of damage and make sure it's clean. Clean and inspect the housings as well. This compressor housing looks fantastic, as does the turbine housing. So far, things are looking great. Okay, time to put it all back together. I got a rebuild kit from agpturbo.com, and they were very helpful in finding the right kit for me. First thing to do is lay out all the parts and make sure you have everything. Looking good, so let's start. I'll first replace the o-ring on that cover for the compressor side. Next you'll need to remove and replace the spring clip for the center section of said cover. Feel free to use a bunch of oil on the rebuild, just make sure it's clean engine oil. With these spring clips, you're going to want to start with the closed end and push it up and around towards the split end. That usually makes things a lot easier. Now just push the center section through the cover until it won't go any further. Next we'll replace the inner bearing retainer C-clip. You can sometimes leave those in if they're a big pain, but I recommend replacing them. This clip keeps the bearing from moving too far into the cartridge, so it's pretty important. Same for both sides. Hopefully you can see it down in there now. Next, oil the bearing really well and slide it into the cartridge until it meets the C-clip. Make sure it spins freely, then secure it with the second outer C-clip. Next, we'll put the thrust bearing in place. Be sure to reinstall all parts with this. The new style I have is a 360 degree style, so that intersection is now two pieces. That's a new one for me, so I'll install the shoulder sectioned up first, then the thrust bearing, then the flat washer. Then the oil deflector, and push the cover assembly with the new o-ring down to keep everything together. Secure it with the c-clip and ensure that nothing is shifted in there. Okay, we'll flip the cartridge over and install the oil bearing with the new oil of course, and then secure it with another c-clip. Once again, make sure the bearing spins freely when installed. Now it's on to the turbine shaft. There's another spring clip you'll need to install here. Start with the closed end again and push it towards the split. Be sure to clean as you go here if you need to. Don't forget that cover we removed earlier. Install that first, then slide the turbine shaft all the way through. I like to give it a tap with a dead blow to make sure it's seated. Let's flip the cartridge once more and support it so that it's not sitting on the turbine fins. Grab your compressor wheel and slide it onto the shaft, aligning the marks we made earlier. Put a small drop of Loctite onto the threads and thread your nut down. You'll need a torque wrench that's capable of reverse thread, so make sure you have something like that. Then torque the nut down to 75 inch-pounds. Do a quick check here for free spin and play. Everything should be pretty tight as far as play, while still allowing the shaft to spin freely. Okay, let's align the marks on the cartridge and housings and start with the turbine housing. Install it over the wheel, then use the clamps to lock it down. There's no way to get a torque wrench on these, so just get them tight. Next up, it's time to lube the o-ring and install it onto the... Uh... This o-ring was not part of the new kit, but a simple email chain with AGP Turbo again, and they sent me what I needed very quickly. Thanks, guys! I'll put some silicone on the new o-ring and install it onto the cartridge, then slide the compressor housing over it. Turns out the paint mark I lined up earlier was the dribble from before, so I'm going to loosen the clamps and rotate things to the way I want them, then lock them back down. Finally, the compressor housing can be secured. Just get the clamping bolts tight so it won't move. Once everything is back together, be sure to check the shaft play again. This one is nice and tight laterally, with just a hair movement radially, which is perfectly fine. This turbo, based on inspection, was probably okay to run, but you always want to rebuild one for peace of mind. Also, be sure to prime the turbo before you run it for the very first time on your engine. There are some good deals to be had on eBay when it comes to secondhand performance parts, but you just want to be thorough with the inspection. We got lucky with this one, but I've been burned before, which is why I wanted to make this video. Knowing what to look for and how to rebuild them can really save you money and headache for your projects. I hope you found this video informative, and make sure you like and subscribe to help me out and get more of these videos to you. 
Also, you don't want to miss the installation of this turbo, so hit that notification button as well. As always, thanks for watching.